In this program, I'd like to look at different ways to build raised beds. I'm going to look at different construction materials as well as different designs and try and figure out which is the best way to make a raised bed. I'm in an herb garden here and we have several different type of beds and I'm going to compare them and give you an idea of what you should and should not do in your garden. This is a really nice design for a raised bed. It's made up of large bricks. Now these are glued together so they can't move. I think that if you did a bed like this that was lower, a layer of three or four bricks, you probably wouldn't need to glue them together. As you get higher, it's a good idea to do that so they don't fall apart and nobody gets injured. One of the advantages of bricks is that you can make this any shape you want. You can even make a round one if you want, although those aren't that practical. A long narrow bed is much better. You can use bricks like this, or you can use concrete blocks, and that's very popular. The concrete blocks are good building material because they're a little lighter than these bricks and less expensive. Again, I wouldn't go any higher than three blocks if you're doing that because they're a little less stable than these. If you go any higher, then start putting in cement and cementing the whole thing together. The downside of these is that it's a relatively expensive building material. I mean, each brick isn't that expensive, but look at the number you need to make a relatively small bed. They're also very heavy, and you have to get them from the store to your location, which is a lot of work. Some people are concerned with using concrete blocks because the material is made with fly ash, and fly ash does have heavy metals in it. But don't worry about that. Those have been studied, and the amount of leaching from those is so small that there's probably more arsenic in the soil than there is in the bricks and the concrete blocks. So that's a non-issue. Concrete blocks are alkaline, and a little bit of that alkalinity will leach into the soil. So if you have very high pH soil, it may not be your best option. Now, bricks are better for that. They're not going to change the pH of your soil. Now, if your soil is acidic, that extra alkalinity is actually a bonus. I think bricks and concrete blocks are great if you're building a lower bed or one this high. But if you want a higher bed, say for a wheelchair access, that becomes really expensive and more difficult to build. So don't go too high with these beds. The other advantage of this is that these things will last a long time. 50 years from now, they're still going to be here. And that's also a disadvantage. If you want to move this, it's next to impossible, particularly if you've cemented or glued them together. There's no way this is going anywhere without a sledgehammer. So that is an advantage of some of the other building materials we're going to look at. You might think you want this bed forever, but you may not want to. If you're new to gardening, I think you're better off with other material like probably wood. It's easy to get rid of and change the space if you want to. Only go this route if you're certain you know what you're doing and you're certain you want it for a long time. Here's the poor man's raised bed. It's just a barrel. This particular one is a plastic one to look like a real barrel that's been sawn in half. But these work quite nicely and I think for new gardeners who are just experimenting, this is your first garden, you're trying things out, this is a great way to go. If you change your mind, there's very little effort put into building it, you've wasted very little money. So give this a thought. Now what about these marigolds? Now they're a pretty plant and if you want to plant marigolds because you like the look of them, great. If you're planting marigolds because you think it's going to keep the pests out of the garden, that's a myth. In fact, marigolds probably attract more pests to the garden than they repel. This idea people have that marigolds keep the pests out of the garden and keep all your vegetables clean, complete myth. If you want to read about marigolds and the myths about them, come over to my blog, GardenMyths.com. It's still early in the year, but the garlic here is looking great. You know you're going to have big bulbs because the plants are nice and large. So I expect a really good harvest here. This bed is made by 2x4s. Now a 2 inch board is only 1.5 inches. That's the thickness of this board and you can buy it in various widths. I think this is one of the best options for raised beds. It's relatively inexpensive. It's fairly easy to build if you're handy with a saw and a hammer. 
hammer, but it does take a bit of skill to put together. You can make them one high, two high, three high, four high, ten high if you want. Personally, I like them a little lower, but this isn't a bad height. What I see a lot of people doing when they're making the wooden raised bed is they're using wood here that's too thin. Don't use anything less than one and a half inches thick. Now the thinner boards are less expensive and that's why people pick them, but they're too soft in the middle here. That soil will push them out in the middle here and they'll get all warped. Four inch boards is probably overkill, but that does make a much nicer bed. But the two inch boards is what you should go for. But I recommend the two inch boards. It's a compromise between cost and longevity. Now you have two options here. You can use real natural wood that's been untreated, or you can use pressure treated wood. Now a lot of people are concerned about pressure treated wood because it contains chemicals and those chemicals will leach out into the food. Well that used to be a problem. About 15 years ago we made pressure treated wood with an arsenic product and that arsenic did leach into the soil and could have gone into the food. The newer treatment uses a copper-based material and it's much safer and the testing has shown that there's very little leaching taking place. You don't have to worry about that getting into your food. Pressure treated wood is fine. Now if you're collecting old wood and repurposing it, make sure it's not too old. Make sure it's copper based. Now the other option is natural wood that hasn't been treated. The problem is most of our wood around here is pine and that's a very soft wood and it rots pretty quickly. Again, if you're a new gardener, build some low beds, use pine, use them for a couple years and see if you like it. You might want to change the design anyway. Then in two and three years from now, rebuild them with better material. Now you can go out and get cedar. That's great. That lasts as long as the pressure treated wood. And some people claim it lasts even longer. I kind of doubt that. But around here, cedar is really expensive. So have a look at what things cost in your area. You might be living in an area where cedar is easy to get and it may be a good cost alternative. Around here, pressure treated is your best option. Here's a different design for a wooden raised bed. It's a little higher than the one we just looked at. So that can be an advantage, particularly if you have a wheelchair and you need this kind of height. You can see that the underneath part is empty here. Whereas the last one we looked at, that soil went right to the ground. This one just has a small area of soil. In fact, they've tapered the sides here, so there's not much soil in here. So is that a good idea? Well, there's pros and cons to every decision. The advantage of this kind of bed is that you have less soil, so you have to buy less soil. You have to truck less soil in here. It's easier to build and easier to fill. The problem is plants like lots of soil, and this is really not enough soil for a lot of crops. Now, it depends on what you're growing. Here we're growing basil and basil doesn't need a lot of soil, so it's fine in this kind of a bed. On the other hand, if you're trying to grow large tomatoes here, they really want more space. The roots of a tomato plant are much larger, and they'll reach out two to three feet from the center of the plant. They want a soil area like this, so tomatoes wouldn't be really happy. In Smaller things like salads and herbs, they'll do fine in here. Now this is a pretty sturdy construction, but the boards up here are one inch boards. That means that the actual thickness is three quarter of an inch. Those won't last very long, two to three years and they'll start rotting out. So what they've done in this case is they've added some weed barrier in here to keep the soil away from the wood. People also use plastic for that. And the thinking is that if we keep the plastic between the soil and the wood, the wood will stay dry, it won't rot, and it'll last longer. That's a myth. What actually happens is that at some point water gets in between the plastic and the wood, and now the plastic holds the water there for a long time. The water can't dry away. So in fact, lining this with weed barrier or plastic, which essentially are the same thing, it just keeps the wood even wetter. So don't line your beds, no matter what material you're using. Plastic rots wood faster than without. Now personally, I don't really like this design. I like to have my beds go right to the ground so that the roots can go deeper and reach that soil. The previous bed I showed you needs to be watered a whole lot less than this one. Beds with a small amount of soil dry out really quickly, so this is more work. 
I think this design, though, is a good option if you need that height. If you have some sort of disability where you need to get it up high and you don't want to bring in a whole lot of soil, then this is a good option. What do you put in the bottom of these raised beds? If they're sitting on the ground, should you put cardboard under there? How about weed barrier? Well, the reason people put cardboard down there is to kill the grass and the weeds that were down there. And people put weed barrier down for the same reason. They want to keep the weeds out. Well, I've got news for you. If your bed is even six inches tall and you're putting it on lawn grass in cooler climates, so we have the cool growing grasses, they're going to get killed. You don't need to put anything down there. Six inches of soil will kill your lawn. Now, there are some warm growing grasses that are a little more aggressive and you might want want to kill those before you put anything down. Well, what about weed barrier? Is that going to work? Is that going to keep the weeds from coming up from underneath? No, it's not. Most weeds will get killed because they're not aggressive enough. But things like bindweed and Canada thistle, if you've got that in the ground, they're going to come through weed barrier. They're going to come through cardboard. It doesn't matter what you put at the bottom, they're going to come through here. The best thing to do in that case is to kill them all with a herbicide before you even start and then keep them away from the raised bed. Things like bindweed and can of thistle, they travel 10 feet underground with no problem. I've had a pile of mulch that's six feet tall and they grew right up through it, no problem. If they're in the ground there, they will find your raised bed. Don't put anything in the bottom. Build them, fill it with soil. How about using metal? Does that make a good raised bed? Well, the advantage of metal is that it's very long lasting. You buy a good product, this thing will last you 30, 40 years. They're relatively easy to build. You don't need any power tools. Screwdriver is probably all you need, or maybe a wrench. They come in pieces, you build them together. Or smaller beds can be bought as a single unit, plop it down on the ground and you're ready to go. Metal options can be more expensive. And some people are concerned about things like galvanized steel leaching heavy metals into the soil. Uh, these types of beds can be coated with a zinc. That keeps them from rusting. But the tests have shown that Virtually no zinc enters the soil, and it's certainly not going to enter the plants in any amount. So metals are fine. They will rust over time, and it's probably better not to try to coat them or to paint them in any way. I mean, you might want to do that for aesthetic reasons, but you're not really preserving the metal. Fill it with soil, use the garden, and don't worry about a bit of rust. That's called patina. People pay extra for patina. One advantage of metal beds is that they can be made quite high and they're quite sturdy once they're in place. So they may be a good option for you. Another option you might want to consider are cloth raised beds or raised beds made out of plastic. There are a number of these on the market now and they work quite well. Now the cloth material won't last very long, but it will certainly do you for a couple years. Plastic will last much longer. I think they're great for a beginning gardener who just wants to try things out. But if you're a serious gardener, I think the other options I've discussed are better. What about aesthetics? That's also important for a garden. Aesthetics is personal. Now, I personally don't like the look of plastic or metal. I like these bricks. They look quite nice. I also like wood. Wood just seems to be such a natural product and fits in the garden well. And I hope you can hear me but I have competition in the trees. All right, so what's my choice? What would I do? If it was me, I'd build a raised bed that's quite low. I would only make it six, eight inches tall. When I first started gardening, all we did was hill up the soil and we got four inches that way. I might build it with wood because it looks a little neater if you edge it with wood. But use one panel, one eight inch board, that's seven and a half inches deep. That's all you need, less work, less cost, just as much food. Quite honestly, if you're interested in growing vegetables, grow them in the ground, learn how to do the gardening. Now I understand raised beds. These things look really nice and they do make it a little easier. There's less bending involved. There's more cost. And my concern is that a lot of you are starting out in gardening and you're going out and you're paying all this money and spending all the time making raised beds instead of spending the time and money on learning how to grow your vegetables. But that's just me. I think raised beds look much better than without beds. So if aesthetic is important to you, hey, these are great options.
Here's the poor man's raised bed. It's not raised at all. It's right on the ground. I think this kind of garden has so many advantages over raised beds. No cost. You don't have to build anything. You don't have to truck in soil, so it's better for the environment. For some reason, today, people think that you can't grow anything on the ground. You have to use a raised bed. You have to use special kind of soil in that raised bed. That's simply not true. I've been gardening for almost 50 years, almost exclusively grown things in here, particularly if you're a new gardener and you just want to give it a try to see if you like gardening. Consider this. You don't need raised bed. Now, I know people say, well, I don't like bending over or I have problems with my back and it's difficult to bend over. If you do gardening properly, you spend very little time bending over. A little bit when you plant the seed and after that, you put down some mulch. There's very little weeds here. A lot of the harvesting is up higher for things like peppers and tomatoes and peas and beans. Now carrots, you have to bend over and harvest down here, but that only takes a few seconds. But before I go, I've got a video for you. You've built yourself some great raised beds. It's time to fill them with soil. What kind of soil do you use? This video right here will show you that. And how much soil do you need? Well, I've also created a soil calculator that works for raised beds and any other garden area. It'll calculate how much soil you'll need, how much mulch you need. And a video about that is right here. And you can find the soil calculator on my website, gardenmyths.com. Happy garden.